Hi everyone, it's Dr. Katie from Optometric Associates in New Holland, Pennsylvania. And I'm here today to talk to you about myopia, which is nearsightedness, and give you an introduction into myopia control. So first of all, what is myopia? It is a common condition in which the light focuses in front of the retina, which causes blur at distance and requires either spectacles or contact lenses for clear distance vision. Myopia typically increases, especially when diagnosed in childhood and gets worse as the patient becomes older. Currently, and in the last few decades, we've had a staggering increase in myopia that is across the world and in the United States as well. Right now, approximately 40% of Americans are nearsighted. And if we continue at this current trend in 2050, it will be about 58% of Americans. There are multiple factors that contribute to that, uh, both genetics as well as the environment. In terms of the genetics, if a child has two patients that are two, sorry, two parents that are nearsighted, they have a 50% chance of becoming myopic. And if they have one parent that is nearsighted, they have a one in 3% chance of becoming nearsighted. And even if the child does not have any nearsighted parents, they still have a one in four chance of becoming myopic. And in regards to the environment, Research has shown that outdoor time is protective against myopia, and that is due to a combination of the eyes being relaxed and not focused on near objects. And with the sunlight, there is vitamin D uptake as well. So if a parent has a child that is not yet diagnosed with nearsightedness, please ensure that they're getting an adequate time outside. Our parents always told us to play outside and they were onto something. They just didn't know what. It was myopia control. Uh, so why do we care so much about this? Well, it, what I mentioned before that if the child is diagnosed at a young age, as the child grows, the eyeball lengthens and this leads to a higher prescription. This can also lead to negative ocular health impacts down the road. These risks include cataracts, which is a clouding of the lens, glaucoma, which is damage to the optic nerve, typically from high pressure, retinal detachment, as well as myopic maculopathy. Myopic maculopathy is damage to the cells in the center of the retina that provide our 20-20 vision. And unfortunately, this is an irreversible form of vision loss. If a patient is nearsighted, they actually have a two to three times increased likelihood of having glaucoma. When a patient is between the years eight and 15, it's important to try to slow the progression to have a positive impact on their future ocular health. And just lowering their prescription by one diopter or controlling their myopia by one diopter can have a huge impact it can decrease the rate of, or the risk of myopic maculopathy by 40%. It will decrease the risk of glaucoma by 20% and the risk of vision impairment by 20%. Now this all sounds great, but how do you go about controlling the rate of myopia in children? There are three methods that are typically utilized and which we are all doing here at Optometric Associates. They are orthokeratology, atropine, and multifocal contact lenses. Orthokeratology is a rigid lens that the child or the patient wears overnight. And as a result, they do not need to wear glasses or contact lenses during the day. Ortho-K slightly changes the shape of the cornea and delays the signal for the eye to continue to grow. So it successfully can control myopia. And stay tuned, Dr. John will be giving us a video more in depth about Ortho-K, as well as you'll be able to meet some of our patients that currently wear those lenses. And the second method is multifocal contact lenses. These are a soft, what you would think of as a traditional contact lens. They provide clear distance vision, but also relax the focusing system up close. And the, there are different designs to the optics of these lenses, but they typically have rings of what they call the treatment zone. And what this ensures that 
It takes into account that the eyeball is curved and not flat, so it's not one power across the contact lens. And then none of the light is focused behind the eye, which would be a signal for continued eye growth. These contacts exist in both a daily as well as a monthly option. We try to encourage our young patients and all new wearers to start with daily lenses because there's a lower risk of infection and the ease of use to get used to them is just much better for patients. And the last option for myopia control is called atropine. Atropine is a drop that is dosed in the patient or child's eyes before bed and they would continue to wear their glasses or contact lenses during the day. The dosage of atropine that is given is a very low dose. It is either 0.01% or 0.05%. And that is because atropine in its strongest form would be a very strong dilating agent, but the low dosage does not cause pupillary dilation or blurred vision at near. This medication is in the um, drug class that's called anticholinergics. And there are receptors in the retina that regulate eye growth and slow the progression of myopia. So with all three of these methods, they are all excellent options depending on the patient and the patient's prescription. The goal of these options is not to halt the myopia that will still possibly slightly progress, but to delay the progression as much as possible to have a positive impact on the patient as an adult and for the long term. So if you have any questions about myopia or any of these three methods, please don't hesitate to contact us or make a consult for your child. Thank you.